Uh, Jose, what's the next topic? Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's go over some of this other Resident Evil news real quick. Um, Mercenaries is making a return. The last time it was in the series was with Resident Evil 6. Um, I don't think people give Resident Evil enough credit for basically starting uh, the entire like horde frenzy that like Gears of War kind of popularized, and that's why it's literally called horde mode. And that like that's that's just the generic term people apply to it whenever it's in other games. Um, technically, it was in Resident Evil Three first, but I think most people probably prescribe it to Resident Evil Four as being where it really got good. Um, I think for this game being more action oriented, it makes sense for it to actually be back in here. And if you just want to get some fun arcadey gameplay versus replaying the entire game, I think that's a damn good addition. I'm happy it's back. I also, I also would like to state that I uh, that uh, if it weren't for Resident Evil Seven and also the likes of uh, PT, we wouldn't, we wouldn't probably have been getting like the slew of first person horror games for the past like five uh, like six some odd years uh that have started to i want to say pretty frequently i want to say some of that we can probably chalk up to a bit of happy coincidence i would probably pin it more on stuff like uh amnesia and outlast because even by the time that pt kind of like kind of like kind of uh dropped i believe that was it was e3 24 14 or 15 it was before res not resi it was before metal gear solid 5 came out uh so it was either 2014 2015 it, it came out and uh resident evil 7 was already like in active development they had that kitchen demo so it's not necessarily like they rushed um or, or like shifted development just because they saw uh pt drop yeah. no yeah for sure um i think i know he, what you're yeah, saying though yeah, yeah. it played a part in showing i feel like it did yeah. that it was mm-hmm. something that people still wanted even if the people who owned those properties didn't really do the right thing with it. but i you know i th- but you know what i'm getting at it's like i see i see this this shift uh sort of yeah. in the in the horror genre of video games you know we see we see a lot we see a lot and i, I think also now you could say that for you could say that for like other genres too. So like I feel like more for instance, I feel like Animal Crossing sort of either continued on or started this new fad of like uh village life video games taking on more of a three dimensional mm-hmm. cutesy look. And I can also probably blame that on on the art style of Pokemon too. Uh, cause then we see, uh, you know, then we see games like Story of Seasons up here. So it's like I, I, you know, uh, certain games start out a fad in the gaming industry and then it yeah. carries on and carries on until people just don't like it anymore and they want something fresh and new. Mm-hmm. There's at least one other game other than Story of Seasons that also does that whole like, oh, so it's start like a town or a farm, but build it yourself mechanic. Right. Um, or look at like how Breath of the Wild influences things like Genshin Impact and other shit. Uh, yeah. What was it? Immortal Phoenix Rising. Exactly. Uh, what did you think of um so so we know that like weapon upgrades and even character upgrades are going to be a thing in um like even in the main story which you know what little tidbit i learned from uh the i was listening to the game informer podcast i guess they have some exclusive coverage of it whatever uh you can upgrade ethan by going on like little not hunting missions but you can hunt animals and that's how you have you specifically have to do that in order to um to upgrade yeah. yourself that's why i'm convinced that's that like nuts. that's what i'm convinced because like the map is huge and i feel like we're getting set up for kind of like an open world-esque like situation and i have a feeling that if you're hunting and stuff the- there might be some like side stuff you can like side missions mm-hmm. that you can actually do there's got to be, like, you know how the gates get closed on you at the beginning of the demo? There's got to be, like, a whole other area that before... Because we know that we stop at where you go to the castle, and then there was, like, a door to, like, a mill or something, which you're... Mm-hmm. Assumedly... And there was, I think, one other, one or two other locked gates in that little area. But, mm-hmm. like, there's just got to be, like, a whole forested area, then, if they're going to do that. Because that just sounds... that I didn't even know about that. That sounds fucking crazy. Right. And, ooh, one thing I'm also looking forward to is because because we're getting treasures back, which I'm so freaking stoked oh, about. Oh, yeah. So, like, just the fact it's cur- there's currency and there's treasures now, it's my favorite. And then also, like, what totally surprised me was the Duke's Kitchen. Like, I was like, you could freaking cook stuff in this game. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, there's a cooking simulator in resident evil yeah there's a cookie i'm just like oh my god this is amazing so 
and you just you can cook stuff to like what is it like to feed him and he'll pay you money for the recipes or something that you make for him i i think that might be for the like permanent upgrades i'm not too sure though but yeah so it's like stuff like that really uh either either the game is going to be very long and stretched out because you have to collect money and and treasures and stuff like that and there's just going to be a lot of secret areas that you can find treasures in just like resident evil 4 or there's going to straight up be side missions what did you think of um what did you think of like maybe some of the roguelike aspects that are going to be in uh that's going to be in mercenaries just like the temporary little upgrades we can get like increased movement you can like uh spec into like specific gun trees and whatnot and uh, it's not the main campaign it's not going to be like a permanent thing it's just like built like going for like specific builds based on like whatever's um spawning there for you right and the i feel like the best thing is it's going to be multiplayer if that's the case for for mercenaries because i you know it's you got to play with your friends you got to be able to play with your friends i don't think they've announced it but I, I think the favorite thing for me in Mercenaries, um, because I, 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 th- I still kind of like how how cheesy it was in Resident Evil um, 4, because you could play as like Leon, you could play as Ada, and then they just let you play as like Krauser, who, who's not a protagonist in that game, and you just get and access Wesker. to this. Yeah, you, you can play as Wesker too, and it's freaking, it's nuts. <laughs> um, it if you can only play as, if you can only play as Ethan, that, that's fine, but I, I would like it to embrace that wackiness a bit. Well, mm-hmm. here's the thing. Can we play as Lady D? If that's a yes, can we upgrade her heels for stomping? Can we upgrade <laughs> her claws? <laughs> we already know that we have a color for her underwear. Does that mean that we can unlock like different underwear for armor? I'm just saying. Ask like, the just, real question. Because the nature, the nature of mercenaries, plural is that there are multiple characters that you can play as. Um, I think one of them, I think obviously you'll get to play as Ethan, but I think obviously you'll also get to play as Chris. Um, that's just like a given. Uh, but yeah, I think yeah. that would be interesting to be able to play Especially as like Especially if we're basing Lady off of like Resident Evil 7 and how that worked. Like I would be yeah. surprised if we didn't have at least a sequence as Chris. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. And then, I, you know, I think that would be interesting to play as Lady D or like play as one of the daughters or something. Are we, are we like, just calling her Lady D now? I don't know how to pronounce her last name. <laughs> Dimitrescu. Tall lady. Dimitrescu. It's, it's the same reason I used to call Gascoin Gascoin. Or I said, like, no, I used to call him Father Gas Town, which was fun. I mean, uh, and then I was going to say, as much as I, I do, uh, I love the whole, you know, currency being back and the Duke is really cool, like, of a concept. I am going to miss the, uh, you know, what are you buying? What are you selling? What are you buying? <laughs> Hello, stranger. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to miss that. I am terribly, terribly going to miss that. I will say, um, as cool as I think everything is, I do think it, I want to mirror things I've seen. I think I've seen Justin say this from the STGC, but I think it is kind of shitty that they went right for like, look at this, like the fat opulent. He's so fat. His fat rolls out of the thing. And it's very clearly kind of, doing a not great thing with it even if it's not super shitty they're still just kind of doing a whole like a greedy you, you know what i mean what i'm trying yeah. to say yeah, a duke you know a, yeah, yeah and it's and it, 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 that feels gross but at the same time i still enjoy like everything else about the game i just wanted mm-hmm. to mention that because i feel like it is important to still mention that shit mm-hmm. right 